Buongiorno and welcome back to Koi Fish Johnny. Okay, this is unbelievable. Literally, like you can see, I'm walking on crutches. I've gone from doing a filter change, a quick filter change, to the back of an ambulance. And it is just literally unbelievable how um, how such an incident happens to me. Like literally just my luck this year has just been crazy. And also how it turned out to be one of the best Friday nights I've had in quite a long time due to absolutely amazing people. I'm gonna walk through with you uh, what happened. We can laugh at it now, but I tell you what, it was not funny when it happened. It literally was not funny at all because I was literally at one point <sighs> quite scared. No, well, not scared, but worried about how I was going to resolve the situation I was in due to the fact I was on my own. I'm just going to run you through what happened, all right? And feel free to laugh at it because I have survived it. I am all right now. I'm just walking around with my ego damaged and um, on crutches, which isn't cool, but I tell you what, a lot of people open doors for you now that you've got the crutches, just been out and got my hair cut, which is nice. And everyone seems to open a door and move out your way. So that's that's a positive out of a negative. So onto the day at hand. It was Friday last week. Me and the wife had took a day off work uh, and I took my cake out, my wife, um, to Manchester Market and we'd had a lovely time. Here's a little picture of us at the market, having a little hot chocolate and a bit of fun. So we've been to the market, we'd come back, football was on because it was Friday. Can't remember what game, but I've been enjoying the World Cup. Sat down at my table, Wife went to bed because the kids have been up all night and have been, or just not sleeping patterns aren't great at the minute, so it's taking toll on the wife. So she thought she'd get a little bit of shut eye for an hour as it was like three, four o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. I was watching the football. So in the half time interval, be it four o'clock, I thought, belting, I'll try and box off more of my jobs uh, for the weekend that I normally do at the weekend. I'll do a quick filter change. I'll drop the Tempest and I'll drop the, the Nexus and I'll be back in time for the second half. So I set about that. I wasn't doing a video at the time. I wish I was doing a video because there'd definitely be some funny parts of the video and some cringy parts of the video of what I was doing. I was thinking about a video and it was gonna be on the nitrogen cycle. I was gonna do a video on the nitrogen cycle from the Nexus and the filtration system for people starting out where it gets over a little bit over complex. So that was the video I was thinking about at the time of doing this, obviously, while well, I was cleaning my Nexus. Right, perfect time, opened up the valve, and it was dropping down and I'm round the back there. Guys, as you know, um, that's where my uh, Nexus is, round the back, and that's where I was at this particular time. I'd literally just turn, turn the valve, the water was starting to flood out, and I was just thinking, I don't, know, I don't know what I was doing, I was thinking about something or other in my mind. And either way, I've moved around, do you know, like I moved around the Nexus and put all my weight on my left leg. Uh, and then all of a sudden, boom, it just went off and I just fling myself in the air, clutching at my left leg, okay? So I, I, at this point, I have no idea what's going on. I'm like, just in pure shock of like, this hurts and it ain't fun. And I ended up on my ass, on the floor, right at the back of there, which is a problem uh, because I'll tell you about it in a minute as we move on, it is a problem area that to be located on the floor. Uh, so I hit the deck and I'm squeezing, literally squeezing the bottom, the top of my calf sort of thing. Um, you know, like, I, I, I've got my jeans on, I've got my vest on, because I always have my vest on. Uh, but I've got my favourite jeans on, which was also a problem for later on. Um, and I'm squeezing and squeezing and squeezing the top of my leg as I'm landed on the floor. And I'm just like, hoping it's one of those pains that just passes and it's like I tweak something or something's gone wrong or something. But I'm in absolute agony. And I'm thinking, as a couple of minutes went on and I let out a few manly rrr, rrr, noises from the bottom of the garden, um, feel free to laugh at that. Uh, I'd, I'd sat there and I knew at this point something was majorly wrong. Uh, and I thought, I'm not gonna be able to get out of this one that quickly. So while my adrenaline's up, I need to think about a plan. So, well, now I take a look down at my leg praying that it's not like detached or whatever I'm gonna look at, I'm hoping that it isn't too big of a problem. And when I look down at my leg, I think, shit. It looks like I've got two, like it looks like for me that I've got a continuation of one leg and then I've got another continuation of a leg. So another tibia and fibula or whatever it's called, the calf, that part of my leg, my calf, 
going down to my foot. It looks like I've got two sections or it's broken into two, so I'm thinking I've snapped my leg at this point. But because I'm in a bit of shock and all that lot, and I'm thinking, what the hell? My jeans has got this massive bump into the left. And I'm just think, I'm just squeezing it. I'm thinking, hmm, this ain't great. So, so, so then I think, I lie back and I think, oh shit, I've not got my phone. I never, ever, ever bring out my phone to do the filter change. I'm one of them people that pop it on the table and a mobile is not mobile, it stays where it is. Uh, and I'm thinking, right now, I'm stuck. Like literally there, guys. And uh, what I'll do is I'll show you a picture of, because because I can't go out and it's frosty and I'm not that mobile, I'm not gonna run around the garden and show you where it was. I'm just gonna crop in like pictures um, of where I was and what it was. So this first picture is where I landed on the floor. Okay, so if you look at this, I landed, I was doing the filter clean there, stood next to the blue shell, and then when my leg snapped or whatever's gone on with my leg, I've ended up on my back with my head on the piece of wood, which also becomes later on a little bit funny, uh, because that piece of wood is a long piece of wood, and when people stood on it, it wiggled my head. Uh, so that's that, my head ended up on the wood, and my leg, um, my injured leg, my left leg, my foot was resting on the top of the shell. So it was like, it was it was like resting to the left. Do you know what I mean? On the on the on the outside of the foot, it was like that, and I couldn't move it from there. Um, and it was extremely painful. That was the position I was stuck in. Okay, so I was stuck there at this particular point. All I can see is this, so I'll crop this little video in so you can see like a John's eye view of what he, what I was able to see at this particular time. So you can see there guys, to the left, I just had a little opening in the back of my garden. The fish pond blocking all my view, couldn't see anything. The right is a fence and behind me was a fence. So nobody could see me and I'm not overlooked at all in my garden, which normally is a good thing. In this particular situation, it definitely wasn't. So I was panicking because I didn't think I had my phone. I didn't think I had a method of communication. I was thinking, what, how can I get my wife's attention? She's in bed, she's not gonna notice I'm knocking about. Uh, when's the next time someone's gonna come round here or anything like that? I'm just thinking, shit, I, can't, I need to get back in the house. So. I looked at my leg again and I, f and I realized my hands were clutching to my the top of my calf um, or the top of my the bottom of my leg I can't remember chin bone something like that top of that I was like squeezing that and I noticed that it wasn't underneath the bump in my leg so the the new additional bump that was in my leg in my jeans on the left my hands weren't directly underneath it so I knew that my leg was sort of, it was good news, that my leg was sort of in a line, but something had moved to the side. That something being my patella, my, my um, what do you call it, shin bone, it decided to take a tour and under the pressure, somehow it had whipped itself completely and utterly to nine o'clock. So my, my patella, which is the, the little shin bone thing that sits on top of your joint, that protects the joint, had now relocated itself all the way on the left. And... I was just in agony. Well, I was letting out manly groans like, ooh, 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 like type of stupid stuff going on in the back. I remember doing it. I remember at one point laughing just due, due to the, not because I found it funny. Well, actually I did find it funny in my moment of pain. I was just laughing at the fact of the situation I was in. Unseeable, unhearable, nobody able to find me, unable to communicate with any, anyone. And it's five past four and the next person to see me or think about me was going to be my wife when she woke up from a snooze at about five. So anyway, at this point, I'm just, obviously, I'm just, I'm just like in pain at the bottom of the garden. I'm literally just in pain. And I lay there and I lay back and I fling my head back onto the concrete. And I'm like, I'm cold, I'm wet, I'm in pain. And I don't know how to get people's attention from here now. But then I think, did I, on the praying did I, well, first of all, I thought about my Fitbit that the wife got me to try and get me to trim a bit off the belly. Uh, I thought, does that communicate with people? It doesn't. I didn't try it, but I thought about it. But then I thought, I'm just going to check my pockets just in case, by the off chance, I've got my phone. 
and I'll be able to communicate. But I know that 99% of the time that I go out the back there, I do not have my phone in my pocket because I leave it all on the table. I'm just in my shorts and vest, but this time I'm in my shorts and jeans. Okay, so I reach down and I put my hand towards my pocket and I feel my phone. <laughs> I'm like, yes, thank the Lord. I've gone to the toilet and read a few articles online, uh, taking my time out, sit on the throne like every good man does, and I'd whipped out quickly with my phone in my pocket. So my phone was in my pocket. I picked my phone out. I've never been so happy to see my phone in my life. I picked my phone out and I'm thinking, oh, left hand is permanently on the top of my calf. I'm holding my calf there. No one can see me, no one can think about me. I'm thinking, my wife's in bed. Please, please do not have that phone on silent. Please do not have that phone on silent. So I ring her. And it rings, and it rings, and it rings. I know I'm going to get in trouble for waking her up, but I think it's justified in this occasion. So I'm like waiting and waiting and waiting. Then she answers in a grumpy tone because I'm waking her up. I said, get your ass down to, that, to the back of the pond. She's like a little bit startled because she's waking up. But she realises something's going on, or I'm playing the prat, because sometimes I do have quite a lot of jokes messing around. But she, I think she thought, hmm, this one might be a bit serious. So I shouted. Hung up on her. Turns out it was a Fitbit on her arm, vibrating, that woke her up because her phone was actually on silent. Another slice of luck. So two slices of luck. One, a phone in the pocket. Two, the Fitbit woke her up. So without that Fitbit, she wouldn't have woke up and I'd just have to wait there for a little bit longer. Or, alternatively, ring someone else. So anyway, she comes down into the garden, sees me, thinks, oh, what are you doing? And then she thinks, because I joke around all the time, I'm playing, I'm messing about. No. And then she looks down at my leg and sees my knee all the way over the, on the left, starts to panic. Oh, now I've got someone with me, I'm actually feeling a lot better, obviously. But I'm thinking, right, so obviously, 999, can't move, can't get my... I tried to get my kneecap back in place manually, you know, like giving it a little bang and that. Uh, it didn't work, it didn't go back round, because I know... Uh, I just thought, I've dislocated my shoulder, and when that went back into place, it, it just it didn't hurt that much afterwards. But with my knee, it didn't, it didn't really move back in at all, and the pain was just beyond agony. So I was like, right, we need to get an ambulance out, unfortunately. Uh, so we ring the ambulance. Wife's there. It feels like we're on hold for about 17 hours. It felt like a, an eternity we were waiting for him to answer the phone. But in, in, in all honesty, it was probably about three minutes, three or more, four minutes. But nevertheless, in an emergency, you need people quick. Anyway, goes through the rigmarole. My wife talking to him, this, that, and the other, this, that, and the other. I've got in my head it's going to be eight minutes for the ambulance to get out and get to me here so I can get moving. Don't know why eight minutes, I had eight minutes in my head, so I thought I can just squeeze my leg, I'll be all right. Anyway, it comes through and the woman on the phone turns around and says, your wait for an emergency ambulance will be seven hours. I'm like, really? Seven hours? At four, four o'clock in the afternoon, or it might have been like half past four, sat at the back on freezing cold concrete the temperature's ridiculous. I'm on freezing cold concrete. I cannot move. My leg is gone. I cannot move. I cannot get out of this situation. I cannot wait seven hours. And she says not to move. And I'm like, <sighs> so then that started a little. So gets off the phone, talking to the wife. I'm like, I'm moving from here. I am not staying on this concrete. I am not staying on this wet, horrible concrete till what would equate to midnight for me to be seen. I'll get pneumonia or something will happen to me. I mean, wild foxes could rip me apart in the back there at midnight. No, I'm only joking, but seriously, I did think at that point, oh my God. But then went into my head, my little coconut, my little brain, brain so I met, I like, I've got a super neighbor. I have got um, somebody who's medically trained that lives in our beautiful estate where I live. It's absolutely sensational. And there are so many sensational people and King Kev, is the most sensational of sensationalness. And I said, I said to my wife, just run down the side there, go and get King Kev. Uh, I didn't say King Kev at the time, but I knew that he would have, uh, he's equipped with the knowledge of knowing what to do with me, and he's a man, and he, he will reinforce the decision to move from the back into the house rather than staying for there for seven hours. I was laying on my back and the wife had gone down the cul-de-sac uh, to try and get King Kev. And I was holding my leg and I was just praying. I was thinking seven hours, seven hours of being in agony, not being able to move, not being able to wear. Anyway, it started going dark and that, and I started going a little bit like the adrenaline had started calming down, so the pain was increasing. And I was sat there, or lay there on my back, just looking and praying in my little window of like vision that I could be able to see Kev or the ambulance turn up. And I was like, 
please, please. And then anyway, the, the security light went on because it was dark at this point now. And I heard Kev's voice, amazing, amazing to hear his voice. And the wife came into the background and I was like, this is, oh my God, good people, good people around you is amazing. Kev had given up his own time uh, and ran straight out of his door to help me stuck at the back there uh, or offer advice or guidance or support in my time of need. There was an amazing man that took his time out to come and help me. And for that, I am beyond grateful. So you can see how this is such a lucky story. Bad situation, lucky, lucky, lucky story, okay? So as I as look at it, when Kev arrived, he did like a little look at things and stuff and he agreed, let's move you into the house. Um, let's try and move you into the house because you can't stay out here for seven hours. I'm starting to shake. I don't know how it'd been an hour and a half or something, an hour or something. And because it was so cold, my body was starting to convulse. Is that the right word? I don't know. Uh, but I was starting to shake. Anyway, I heard these magic words. The ambulance is here. It had been an hour and the ambulance, had because uh, where I'm based is between Wigan, Warrington and Bolton and uh, the M6, the other side of Liverpool. Um, and by luck had had it, there was an ambulance that had left Wigan and came straight to me. So I was like, wow. So anyway, okay, they, they came in. Absolutely fantastic guy from uh, London Sports Spurs. And I think her name, she was from this, lovely, this lovely lady, she was from New Zealand. I think her name was Bria, beautiful name. Um, she came through and they were amazing. They hooked me up, I went on to gas and air, I went on to morphine being injected into me, which felt like it was cold down the side because it cut all the way cold down the side. And when that went in, I was like, woo! The pain had stopped and I was in on another planet, but I was looking at the sky and just, a whole new different version of me emerged that was like very relaxed in this situation. So they blew this balloon up around my leg. Uh, this was like, it felt like a balloon. I don't know the medical term from it, but the balloon blew up and stuff like that. And they, uh, all four of them managed to get me to my feet. Me being a very big guy, six foot five, or oh, six and a half foot, six foot five, 18 and a half stone. I'm not easy to move off the floor with one leg. So they got me up and boom, I'm there, right? So I'm back on one leg with this inflatable leg that had. I missed a part out there, which is when this inflatable thing on, I was on high on the drugs, like, and I was like, oh, and it just, it was pumping. There was a pumping noise and it just felt like it was pushing my leg back into where it should be. It was not painful, but just felt like a, 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 a an, a unnegotiable push in a direction if you like so i felt all my leg line back up and i felt or well, potentially felt it line back up and when I, when i got to my feet like i said earlier when i got to my feet i was like oh fantastic i'm at least gonna get warm but then when i started walking like with them under my arms and walking like this which i'm demonstrating now what walking's like for me <laughs> um i started walking i felt the kneecap go from nine o'clock and i felt it just slide because I wasn't walking on the leg as such, putting pressure, it was still bent, but was hobbling. But somehow it was jiggling the kneecap to slide around. And if I go to this zoomed out picture of the concrete base, I was literally approaching the end of the concrete base and I felt it sliding. Or what I interpreted was it sliding back into position at that particular point with the two people under my arm. And it felt glorious, felt amazing. Uh, and I was still high as well. So, and then I got it. Then, long story cut short, then I walked into the back of ambulance, got in back of ambulance, and this is where this fantastic picture is taken of me looking extremely high and extremely elated. Okay, so there. And then from there, I, I honestly had such an amazing time. Uh, not an amazing, yeah, an amazing time. It was great because I went to hospital and yes, I was in pain and yes, I was in shock and yes, they cut out, open my favorite genes uh, because that was the only way that they could get in to see medically assess the actual definite, definitive situation that I was in was to cut my favorite genes off, which I'm not happy about. But anyway, Christmas is here. Hopefully wife will get me a new pair. <laughs> um, so then from that point, we set off and we went to Warrington Hospital. I'm a huge fan of Warrington Hospital, an amazing fan, probably number one cheerleader for the actual hospital. I think every time I've been there, unfortunately I've been there, uh, obviously both my sons were born there and unfortunately there's another situation where I was there as well. Uh, and there are some superheroes that don't wear capes in that hospital. 
let me tell you, some absolute superheroes that need more support than we actually give them and need to be more of a priority in life, really. Uh, like if you, I don't know, just they're just absolutely amazing people. Like the, uh, the paramedics, the hospital people, and the experience there has just been amazing. So I'm waffling on now. So I go in and I'm like, whatever. They've got no beds because of that, they're that under that much demand that I'm, I'm queuing and there's people in beds everywhere for the A and E section. So I managed to hop out and into a wheelchair. So I'm, I'm there in my wheelchair and I've got my like, vest on, like 18 stone guy. I'm thinking, who's going to push me? <laughs> who's going to push me around? <laughs> Who's going to push me round to where I need to be? This beautiful little petite lady. Um, I don't know how much she weighed, but it was definitely not half my weight. And she was tasked with the job to push me through these double unfolding doors <laughs> all the way round. But she was absolutely fantastic. She had a wicked smile, a great sense of humour, and we had a laugh all the way round. And then I arrive at what whatever section, I can't even remember what section it was. And... Um, as I go in then, I meet Katie, who absolutely love her. Fantastic woman, fantastic smile, really nice personality, really great. She looked after me so much and made my Friday evening really, really, not enjoyable, I keep saying enjoyable, it was enjoyable. It was a bad situation, I wouldn't choose to be there, but it was the best a bad situation could actually be. And she assessed the situation, She'd come up with a diagnosis and had to go for an x-ray, went for an x-ray. And then when I'm thinking, that's the end of the nice people now. I've met two. I can't continue on this train of meeting nice people. I go in, oh, I forgot, I forgot who I met in the foyer. I met a husband and wife uh, duo who were absolutely brilliant. She'd fell over and broken her ankle with a horse falling out of a saddle or something like that. A horse had bolted and she'd, she'd fallen over and she needed medical care as well. We had a fantastic laugh. In fact... Here's something that will never happen to me again. Her husband took me for a wee later on <laughs> because I didn't want any nurses taking me for a wee on a Friday night. But seriously though, thank you so much to those two people. If they do watch, because I did tell them I've got a little coffee fish channel um, and they were fantastic, really great people. So then, I, so I'm just meeting great person after great person. Then I go in for my x-ray and Mel, uh, a lady named Mel, took me in and an Iranian lady, beautiful Iranian lady, and they x-rayed me and we had a laugh in there as well and they were absolutely, she, the Iranian lady had a beautiful name but I can't remember it because it was a little bit fuzzy, but I remember it being beautiful. They x-rayed me, we had a laugh about me posing with my hands behind my head and with my leg up in weird positions and stuff. And that was funny then, they were fantastic. And then I went, and then a guy called Jack wheeled me from the back, Jack took me out, wheelchaired me all the way back to where I was originally. Another nice guy. Nice smile, fantastic blue eyes. <laughs> and just a really, really, really nice guy. And we had a laugh. Then I went back to Katie and she wheeled me in for my assessment and said that the, her diagnosis was um, supported by the x-ray and that, yeah, what had happened, it had popped back in. There was no damage, there was no fragments coming off. There wasn't any anything like that. I was to go on painkillers and yes, my knee was blown up. So yeah, so Katie, we had a great chat, we had a great time, we had a laugh, uh, or we, she'd give me a diagnosis, she'd done, she'd done stuff like that, she was a massive professional, and let me tell you, every one of those people that I just listed there, because that was sent on my way then, uh, every one of the people that I just listed there made my life so much better. In a dark time, look at the people there that have made the difference, and they made a difference by being great people, by smiling, by being optimistic, by being nice, by being receptive, and you can't teach this. And I am so lucky on so many factors of a bad situation, so many good people around me. So my wife, Kev, the ambulance people, uh, the paramedics, should I say, my apologies, uh, the lady that greeted me on the way in, and the staff, all the Warrington staff, just absolutely amazing. It has to be a number one hospital in the world for people, just the people that are in there. I'm not saying it's the best expertise, I have no idea, but I can tell you that the people in there that work in that hospital are heroes without capes. And every time that they smile, they know that the people that are in that hospital aren't there for fun, all right? They're there to be treated. And they, the, a simple smile goes so far. So anyway, I left the hospital, come home, and I'm gonna show you now a little video of how swollen my leg was from a filter change. Okay guys, so you can see that was extremely swollen. Uh, I'll probably prop, crop a picture in right now so you can see from a different angle. Um, my knee has been a ridiculously sore. I haven't been able to interact with kids. 
I haven't been able to do much. It's really frustrating sitting down and just taking time out. But like I say, I'm massively grateful to the amazing people that are around me. Bad situation, good people. And the moral of the story is, if you've got a mobile, which you probably have, keep it mobile, all right? So this isn't <laughs> the video I wanted to do again, but hopefully I'm gonna be doing some new videos. I think the next one, uh, certainly one coming soon, will be on the nitrogen cycle of the pond and what filtration actually does, explained in a way that would make sense to me two years ago. Not overcomplicated, not all these crazy NOs and all the stuff that goes with it. I'm putting it in simple terms uh, that would make, sorry, that would make sense to me um, when I started my journey to hopefully help someone out there and also, so you experts, the supermen that comment on the comment section that help me grow can tick it off and say, yeah, Johnny, you're in the right lane, son. So I'm gonna end it, friend, John, call it for Johnny, friendly fishy fun. Love you NHS, thank you so much.